Hi guys, welcome to Bad King. Uh, just really quickly before we actually get started here, uh, for those of you who actually want to follow along with this tutorial using the same prop that I am, like these uh, pair of jeans over here, uh, you can easily do so by uh, heading over to the Bad King website, that's badking.com.au. Go to the uh, product section, inside that you'll find models. Click on that and you'll be able to find a whole bunch of free models uh, available for download. And uh, simply click on the pair of jeans that you'll find in there and uh, download them, unzip them and plug it into your ZBrush. And once you've done that, you're pretty much set to go. So that said, uh, let's go ahead and actually click on this little bit over here and zoom into it a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and turn on polyframe and as you can see this thing is made up of multiple polygroups. We've got a polygroup for the actual button, for the seams, uh, for the bits at the top here, uh, the pocket and so forth. Now what we want to do is create a singular polygroup for absolutely everything and the way we go about doing that is by shooting over to polygroups over here and, uh, and hitting group visible. So when you click on that you'll notice how everything turns into a single color and that's because we've set everything to a singular polygroup. So with that done let's go ahead and close our polygroups. Let's turn off polyframe and click on frame in order to zoom out a little bit. And um, basically the reason we've done that is because um, when we actually start creating a uh, new topology on this it's going to be easier for us to differentiate between the uh, the two polygroups. So for the polygroup for the new geometry and the polygroup for the old geometry being the uh, pair of genes over here. Here. So with that said, let's go ahead and actually get started. One of the more recent additions to, uh, to ZBrush is the use of curve lines. So if we shoot over to brushes over here, you notice how we have a series of different uh, curve brushes available to us. Um, we've got everything from the uh, curve surface, curve tri-fill, curve tubes. Um, we've got things like the insert multi-mesh curves. We've even got our zippers over here. Now what we're after is our topology brush. So if we hit T on the keyboard in order to narrow our selection, you notice here on the bottom here we've got our topology. Let's go ahead and click on our topology brush in order to select it. And what I want to do is quickly explain to you the, uh, the basic principles of the topology brush. Now, um, basically the topology brush uses curves, but unlike the other brushes, um, the topology brush actually uses intersecting curve lines in order to create new geometry. Let me show you what I mean. If I go ahead and zoom into this thing and simply click and drag out um, kind of like this uh, curve line, uh, not much happens until I actually create a parallel line to that and then I start creating intersecting lines like so. Now when I've created these intersecting lines, uh, what you have is kind of like this brand new face that appears over here. Now it goes a little bit yellow, but on the ends here, what you have is these green circles. And that's basically our indicator telling us that that's where the uh, vertice is going to reside. Now we can go ahead and click and drag out additional um, intersecting lines. In fact, we can go ahead and do a whole bunch uh, like so. And um, we could even head in the other direction. So if I go over here and click and drag out this line, I could actually extend it and I can do the same with this one. And then I could go ahead and click and drag down creating new geometry. Now in order to preview the actual geometry that you're creating, uh, all you need to do is zoom out a little bit and simply click on the actual model. Now as you can see here, that's the brand new piece of geometry that we just created. Now the reason it's so thick is because our draw size is set to a reasonably thick uh, level. So it's set to 64. If we go ahead and hit Control Z to undo that and drop that down to something like 16 and then click on our model, notice how the topology or the mesh is a lot thinner. In fact, if we hit Control Z to undo that and drop it down to 1, which is our lower setting, and then click on the actual model, it becomes paper thin. So if we hold down control shift, click on the model in order to select it and only select that and then invert that selection by holding control shift, clicking and dragging onto the canvas, we end up with kind of like this single sided piece of geometry. And that's essentially what one does. So anyway, let's go ahead and hit control Z a few times to go back to, uh, to where we were. And there we are. Let's make our brush size a little bit uh, larger. Otherwise we end up creating kind of like this really thin sort of like a curve line and uh, we don't particularly want that. So let's make our brush so a little bit bigger and let's go ahead and zoom into this thing. Now at the moment our mesh is looking a little bit messy. We've got, uh, or our topology is looking a little bit messy. We've got all these extra little bits and pieces sort of hanging off here. The way we go about cleaning it up is uh, it's rather quite simple. We simply hold down Alt on the keyboard and draw over the bit you want to remove like that. So again, hold down Alt on the keyboard, click and drag over the line that you want to remove. Um, if you want to uh, remove all the uh, extra little bits and pieces, you can simply hold down Alt, 
click and drag anywhere on the model and it cleans everything up. Now again, you could extend uh, the lines out by simply clicking on a point, dragging out in order to extend that selection and, uh, and you got those lines back. In fact, what you can do, you could go as far as creating triangles if you wanted to. Uh, so we can do something like that and then you could create a quad and uh, in order to create an additional point, you do something like this and you've got a triangle. Now, keep in mind guys, um, you may accidentally create n-gons and those sorts of things um, and as you can see here I had a little bit of an accident where it didn't quite take the way I expected. Um, let's go ahead and hit Control z and undo that and I'll show you what I mean uh, in regards to n-gons. So if we get something like this and I create an additional quad, uh, basically what an n-gon does, it creates kind of like a fifth point. So if I go ahead and click and drag out here, I create five points and you notice how the inside of this disappeared? And that's what basically happens when you have an n-gon. You've got five points and ZBrush, or really not just ZBrush, but any retopology program uh, doesn't necessarily like n-gons. They usually cause issues in the mesh and, uh, and they usually don't take. So just be aware of that, guys. If you're ever creating kind of like geometry or, a, or drawing out topology and it doesn't quite take uh, and you have issues, chances are you've got an n-gon somewhere that you, are, you aren't aware of. So usually when you have an issue like that, what I would do is hold down Alt, remove the line, or uh, sometimes just remove the line altogether and redraw it from scratch. And that usually solves the problem. So anyway, um, one of the other things that I think you guys should be aware of is that um, if we go ahead and extend this line out and create kind of like this sort of wiggly-like shape, uh, like so, um, if you ever create a topology that you want to clean up and it doesn't look quite right, you've got all these sort of like extra curve lines all over the place, if you want to sort of straighten them out and tighten the whole thing a little bit, simply head over to, uh, to Stroke over here. Let me put this aside so we can actually see it. So when we go over to Stroke and we've got our uh, curve functions uh, drop down here, click on that. Inside here you've got a button called Smooth and underneath that uh, Smooth button we've got our, uh, our slider here which is our strength indicator. So we can go ahead and we can bring that down to a really low amount and basically that drops the uh, Smooth strength down and uh, if we hit Smooth you can see that it, the uh, topology barely moved. We can go ahead and set it to uh, the highest setting which is 100 and, uh, and go ahead and hit Smooth again and as you can see uh, the effect is a lot more dramatic and uh, it just basically tightens the uh, the curve line a little bit and you get uh, a slightly neater result. Um, keep in mind guys that the, uh, the topology brush isn't perfect. Um, usually what you have to do is sort of rough out the basic topology and then you usually clean it up using um, other tools a little bit later on and uh, I'll show you that in the next tutorial. Um, one last thing before we actually move on to our next tutorial is, um, is if you ever have subdivisions within the mesh your actual topology brush won't take or your curve line won't actually take and that's the same with any curve brush so if I go ahead and hold down Alt and remove all this extra stuff over here like so and then just hold down Alt again, click on the actual or drag out onto the actual um, surface of our model here. I can now head over to Geometry and hit Divide. Give it a second to calculate. There we go. We've uh, divided our, uh, our mesh and so therefore we're sitting at the second subdivision level. Uh, if we attempt to actually draw a curve line out on this, um, you get this little disclaimer that pops up like so. Basically it says uh, the mesh is comprised of multiple subdivision levels, action cancelled and the other uh, curve line won't actually take. So, um, so it's just something to be aware of guys. Uh, so with that said, uh, let's go ahead and actually move on to our next tutorial.